Today we're doing an in-depth look at the WMD7 targeting pod. We can mount it on either the centerline or outer wing stations. The WMD7 houses a TV and IR camera suite with laser spot tracking and designation for laser guided weapons. The zoom available is less than that of other pods like the Lightning II found in DCS, but substantially better than the Lantern found on the Tomcat. It allows us to pick out armoured vehicles at ranges of about 20 nautical miles. So let's load up the pod and set off. Getting the pod set up is nice and simple. First, switch to air to ground master mode with T1 backwards, otherwise you will not be able to ground stabilise the pod. Next, select menu with the bottom center OSB on your display of choice. Press pod and select WMD7 pod. Switch it on and wait for the bit alignment to complete. Once done, we can press cage to uncage the pod and we'll start receiving a video signal. We'll now go over the on-screen controls. Starting top left we have WMD7, our selected pod, the camera mode toggle, CCD, a TV camera, or IR for infrared mode, our focus mode, SP or slave, showing either snowplow mode or slave. In snowplow mode, the camera is locked to the horizon following our aircraft's heading. With slave mode, the pod will follow our waypoint or any other point we lock with the radar. Effectively, this is slaved to our SPI or specific point of interest. Whilst in IR mode, we have the black hot and white hot toggle buttons to swap the colour used to represent hot objects. Below that, we have the coordinates our pod is looking at, showing degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal seconds, and the range to it in nautical miles. Moving right, we have the field of view toggle for wide and narrow. Laser spot search toggle. When this is flashing, the pod will search for the selected laser code. Code. This changes our laser code. You can see the selected laser code bottom center. Pressing code allows us to enter a new laser code. Press the buttons on the edge of the display to enter our new number. 1677. And it will automatically return. Next is the laser designation mode. With auto selected, the laser will automatically engage itself after a weapon is fired, provided the display is set as sensor of interest, which is denoted by an asterisk at the bottom center of the display. Pressing auto will enter manual mode, which latches the laser on. This is indicated by a flashing laser designator and laser code. You can also see the estimated time until impact if a weapon has been launched. For as long as these are flashing, you know the laser is currently firing. If you're designating for someone else, you will need to use manual mode, otherwise the laser in auto mode will look after itself requiring no further input from you beyond setting the initial code. If you make use of manual laser mode, be sure to switch off manual mode and return to auto when you are done to avoid overheating the laser. Periodically, you will see LSR appear in the bottom left. This is the laser pod range finding automatically, to help maintain accurate tracking. In the bottom right corner we have refocus, which as you might imagine will auto refocus the pod. Moving on we have our selected laser code again, and the master arm status, either arm, no arm, safe, or training mode. Moving up to the left side, we've got level. Pressing the buttons beside up or down will change the contrast level. Next, we've got the gain control. Use these two for adjusting the image to ensure good readability of text and to make it easier to spot targets. The tracking mode of the pod is also shown in the bottom center. This will be area track when ground stabilized. If the pod loses area track, it will revert to INS tracking of the previous coordinates that our area track had. If the pod's view is blocked by its own housing or the aircraft, we'll see mask flashing on the display. And lastly, we have point, which is when you have an object locked and tracked. The crosshair shows our target point. When locked in point track mode, we'll see a box drawn around the object we're tracking. The box corners around the edges of the crosshair show our zoom level. This is not the wide narrow field of view like you might find on other pods, but rather the dynamic zoom level. Lastly, on the outer edges of the pod, we have two green T's. These indicate the direction the pod gimbals are looking with the bottom being left to right of our aircraft and the left side being up and down. The direction the pod is looking is also represented by a white dot within the display. 
with the centre being directly below us and the edges of the display being the horizon in each relative direction from our aircraft if you were to imagine it were placed in the centre. We can press the empty space where cage used to be if we want to recage the pod. On our HUD we can see a small circle with a dot in the centre. This is where our targeting pod is currently looking. We can also see a diamond. This is the SPI or the specific point of interest, the point designated by our selected system. Going into point or area track will cause the SPI marker to jump to our pod, indicating that our pod crosshair is designating the SPI. This can then be used as a reference point for weapons guidance. When the pod's view is outside our HUD, the targeting pod circle will flash, and if the SPI marker is outside our HUD, it will draw an arrow from its centre towards that point to help you pick it up. On the right side of our HUD, we have our radar altimeter, range designated point, closure rate in knots showing ground speed, the number of degrees required to turn left or right to face our designated point. T will show the time until we fly over our designated point. Our selected flight plan, flight plan A, and selected waypoint number 4, and the distance to it, and the local time. On the left side, under our Mac number, we have our weapon status, master mode, and our weapons mode, in this case, direct mode. We'll now go over the HOTAS controls for the targeting pod. In order to control the pod, we must set the display it is on to be the sensor of interest. This is done by pressing the S1 hat either left or right. Alternatively, we can cycle the display we have selected with the S1 hat backwards. Soy, or sensor of interest, is denoted by an asterisk on the bottom centre of our display. With our pod set as soy, we can now use HOTAS controls. The pod is also now set to control our speed. The camera can slew about with the T5 slew control, which can be either an axis or a button. If the slew rate is too high, you can adjust this in the special options for the JF-17. Pressing the T5 slew control will lock the ground with area track or point track if available. You can only achieve an area track within about 21 nautical miles of your aircraft. Doing so will also set our designated point to match the targeting pod. The S2 hat allows us to swap between TV and IR camera modes. S2 hat right to swap between black hot and white hot. S2 hat forward to go to narrow field of view. S2 hat backwards to go to wide field of view and S2 hat press to unlock and undesignate our SPI, pressing once more will return our sensor to our current focus mode. In snowplow mode, this will return us to the resting position stabilised on the horizon following our aircraft heading, or in slave mode, it will return to our default SPI, such as a selected waypoint. And lastly, the T6 antenna elevation control adjusts the zoom level in and out. This can be bound as an absolute axis or as an increase-decrease button. With the basics done, we will look at the various uses for the pod, starting with snowplow mode. SP, or snowplow mode, points the pod out in front of our aircraft's nose and stabilises it on the horizon, following our own heading. This is very handy for manually searching for targets in your path. You will want to use this mode if you have suddenly spotted a target and wish to slew the TGP onto it. Note this is not a boresight mode, so it works best in roughly level flight. Simply spot your target point, put your nose on it, go to snowplow mode, and then visually steer the TGPQ on our HUD onto the area that you spotted the threat. Slave mode has a couple functions as a result of its behaviour. Slave will always centre the pod onto whatever we have targeted as our SPI, be it a radar lock, waypoint or mark point, unless it's been manually adjusted away from this point. To reset, press the S2 hat twice. First press to unlock and stop SPI TGP designation, and a second time to return to the slaved point. Or you can cycle into snowplow mode and back into slave mode. In air-to-air -air combat, we can use the pod to identify aircraft at a distance. All we need to do is lock them up with the radar, and our pod set to slave mode. We can then inspect the aircraft from a safe distance by setting soy back to the targeting pod. This can also be used to reveal missile launches, giving us extra situational awareness. We can also slave to any point on the ground that is locked by our ground radar. When operating in air-to-ground mode, simply lock a point with the radar, and the pod will slave to it. Great for inspecting ships or unknown returns. 
This makes it possible to search for ground targets using the radar. It works best against moving targets as small static vehicles will be very hard to pick out from the background in a busy environment. As mentioned before, pressing LSS on our display will enter laser spot search mode. Don't forget to set your laser code to match that of the aircraft or third party that is designating with their laser for you. Once set, press LSS to start the search and we'll see SRCLSS flashing, indicating it is searching. All we do is point our aircraft towards the rough location of the target being designated and it should automatically pick up the point for us and lock onto it. When this happens, DET will appear, indicating it has detected a laser source. Shortly after, the pod will point itself to the laser designation. Tracking will now show. Press LSS to turn it off and we can now start slowing around for targets ourselves if we require it. This is great for receiving targets from friendly aircraft. Remember, if you wish to be the one designating, make use of manual laser mode. We can slave our targeting pod to any waypoint or mark point, ensure that we have no points designated from other sources by pressing the F's 2 hat twice, or reselecting slave. This will unlock any leftover radar or targeting pod speeds, and the pod will slew to our selected waypoint. We can then change which waypoint we've got selected by referencing our upfront control panel. Select the right hand arrow next to our flight plan, and waypoint display. Then enter our desired waypoint number and push the arrow again. Or we can press the arrow, then switch up or down to increment. After a few seconds it would accept our new waypoint, or you can press the arrow once more to instantly accept it. We'll now see the pod slew over to our new waypoint. You should then press the T5 slew switch to go into area track and then we can freely begin to slew around and search for targets. Finally, we can make use of mark points. These are stored in specially reserved waypoints numbers 41 to 49. We can create a mark point on the fly by pressing mark on the upfront control panel. This puts us in the mark menu. We can see overfly 1, 4, 1. Overfly tells us the system will create a new mark point directly under our aircraft's own current location. In 41, the waypoint number our new mark point will be stored in. If we wait, the mark mode will automatically cancel without creating a mark point, or we can press return to cancel. If, however, we press mark again, it will create a new mark point. Returning to mark mode, if we press the left arrow next to overfly, we will change it to designate. Now, if we press the mark button again, we will create a mark point from our SPI, which we can designate from our radar or our pod. Remember that you can only select designate if you have a SPI already designated, and if you exceed the 9 mark points, it will loop back round to the start and start overwriting your previous mark points. And with that, that is all there is to the targeting pod. It's quite a big one, so take a moment to go over it again, and next time we'll get started on the laser guided rockets and bombs. Be sure to keep on my channel for future tutorials. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.